Good morning, everybody. This is Dr. Bill Fisher. I'm with the School of Library and Information Science at San Jose State University, and I'm the coordinator of the school's colloquium series. And I want to welcome you to our first colloquia session for the spring 2014 semester. I'm delighted to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Christine Kuntz. Dr. Kuntz is a faculty member of the School of Library and Information Science at Florida State's College of Communication and Information, and she also is a part-time faculty member for SLIS. So she teaches both uh, for FSU as well as for San Jose State. At uh, FSU, in addition to her teaching responsibilities, uh, Dr. Kuntz has uh, responsibility for the uh, GeoLib uh, program, which is a, a database of information from the U.S. Public Library Geographic database, uh, which provides uh, a good deal of census and other type of information regarding um, some 16,000 communities in the United States with public libraries. However, today, Dr. Kuntz will be speaking to us about some of her experiences in the international arena, specifically uh, how working through the um, International Federation of Library Associations, or IFLA, she made contact with librarians from the Russia State Library and uh, with her expertise and background in marketing helped them uh, develop a marketing plan for libraries in Russia. And so in addition to um, all the focus on Russia this week and next with regard to the Olympics, we also have a little focus on the libraries in Russia. So Dr. Kuntz, uh, let me turn the microphone over to you. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Can everyone hear me loud and clear? All right, terrific. And thank you to uh, Dr. Bill Fisher and Randy Ching for uh, their work on setting up the Spring Colloquium. I'm excited to be a part of it. It celebrates my decade of teaching at Santa Fe State, uh, which I've learned a great deal from so many of my students in the uh, LIBR 283 marketing class. And I've featured uh, several case studies from students at Santa Jose in a new uh, book and guide that we have coming out, Marketing and Social Media, uh, myself and another professor, Lori Mon. So San Jose State has contributed greatly uh, to my professional life, and <clears throat> I really appreciate this opportunity today. Uh, a year ago, I was in Russia, obviously not for the Olympics. I was singularly in Moscow, and it was the result of an invitation I had received a year earlier from uh, a fellow colleague, uh, Mila uh, Lazitya, and uh, she asked me if, in fact, the uh, IFLA Management and Marketing Section Committee, of, of which I'm a member, uh, were to accept the invitation to come to Moscow in 2013, would I consider giving a marketing workshop to uh, librarians in the Moscow region. So this was in the works for about a year. Uh, I can tell you right now I have great uh, empathy and understanding for those who uh, needed to get visas to go to Russia for anything related to even business or work or the current Olympics. Very difficult, uh, complicated process. <clears throat> we take for granted in the United States many of our uh, facile uh, procedures and policies and the way we uh, are used to operating in the United States, but this of course isn't true in other countries. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is one of the benefits of belonging to an international library organization. And I emphasize the library as a profession. Obviously, I'm a member of the American Library Association, the Florida Library Association. And I've had great benefit from those uh, two memberships. Uh, with ISLA, I joined in 1997. 
uh, really pretty much right after email uh, started, which I think uh, greatly enhanced work uh, with IFLA and its committees, uh, just the ability to communicate quickly and uh, to set up meetings such as this and to communicate. So a tremendous amount of work uh, has gone on uh, with this committee. Uh, I'm honored that I've been a part of it in such a vital way uh, and really enjoy all the opportunities to participate that IFLA has afforded. Uh, this is unique, uh, my trip to Russia, and I hope that if any of you attending or, or those maybe listening to the recording at a later date have been to Russia, that uh, you'll communicate with me and share your experiences at the, at the right time. So again, uh, a little bit more about IFLA and the committee I'm on, uh, that's me to the right. Uh, in my next life, I want to be much more uh, of dark complexion. Having grown up in Florida, uh, I have uh, really suffered from too much sun and the damage of being born in Miami. So when I went to Moscow, Russia, you can imagine uh, the little coat I had on was not really cutting it. Uh, I had to have many, many layers uh, on me. It was uh, the coldest climate that I've ever been in and it was February. Our committee is comprised of people from around the world. Uh, those attending, uh, Nadia Tamar to my uh, left in the pictures from Algeria. We had people from France, Norway, Sweden, Germany, Finland, Canada, and the U.S. And uh, each of us had our own difficulties uh, getting visas to get into Moscow. So there's a lot of intricate, uh, detailed information uh, again, that has to be supplied, and it's uh, bureaucracy times 10. So be prepared for any of that uh, if you're traveling abroad to any country uh, to consider uh, the time ahead you need to really do the planning and to uh, be able to participate. One member from the U.S. Uh, who was from the U.S. was not able to come to Moscow because she was not able to get her visa in time. It was very disappointing. So these pictures are within walking distance uh, on the left of the Russian State Library, which is right downtown. This is in the entryway, and it has a lot of aspects of modernity and then a lot of aspects which allow you to see that Russia is, is struggling in building uh, to be a modern society uh, from being very uh, closed off from many countries for different politics and reasons for various decades and reasons. The remnants of all this is obvious and um, certainly many of the younger people are, are born into a new era where uh, they don't have the memories of the past but just really all the hopes and desire to participate in the global uh, world as they are beginning to be allowed to see it. So again, uh, this was the mid-year meeting of the International Library Association Management and Marketing Section. If working with IFLA uh, is attractive to you, I believe it's 78 years old, uh, you certainly uh, would be welcome to contact me about any of the particulars. Not every section has a mid-year meeting. It certainly uh, enhanced the work of our committee and made us one of the most productive in IFLA. But again, there is expense associated with any kind of committee, whether it's statewide, you're going to the California Library Association, the U.S., ALA, or IFLA uh, in whatever country is chosen. Uh, again, this section started in 1997. That happened to be the first year I attended IFLA, and I was quickly attracted to it because of my interest in background and professional training in marketing. So uh, some of the things I've done while a committee member, besides helping out with workshops such as this, uh, in which I helped design and develop the content, uh, marketing workshops not quite as full as this have taken place all over the world uh, that I've been involved with. Uh, Nigeria, Burkina Faso, uh, let's see, um, London, um, 
uh, Leon France, uh, Shanghai, uh, Bangkok, Thailand. Let's see, um, who am I leaving out? Uh, Cape Town, South Africa, and probably several others. And again, uh, these are sometimes uh, more difficult to develop because you have to have a lot of pre-knowledge about your audience, right? <laughs> and a lot of uh, knowledge about uh, the context within which uh, your content will land. So again, to retrieve some background, uh, I was told that many of the librarians attending would be from the Moscow area. Uh, Moscow obviously is a very large populated uh, piece of extraordinarily large uh, and somewhat semi-populated Russia in many areas. And so uh, I was told that the workshop was attended via webcast by over a thousand librarians. Uh, so again, this is what I was told. I don't have any specific uh, documentation to verify this, but this was uh, what I was told about a week after the uh, workshop was over. And of course, it was recorded. <clears throat> but again, um, if you think of a public library in the United States, which is small and rural, uh, you might think, in fact, of libraries in Moscow as being similar, not all. Some are larger, more urban, more splendid, but there are many which are small and uh, definitely uh, burdened with trying to do the work that we as librarians wish to do uh, with lack of funding, but probably more importantly, lack of access to as many information resources as we have in the United States either freely or by design of collection development. So again, uh, this is a, an area which uh, on the surface looks very urban and up to date, but as you dig into underlying areas, they are definitely developing uh, as, as a new uh, Russia, uh, hopefully under new leadership. So again, while as in the United States, some libraries have closed. Uh, there have been many also closing in Russia. So you find uh, the librarians are in a state of kind of um, accepting the status quo, not because it's what they passionately would choose to do, but because they don't have uh, resources to do otherwise. And so again, uh, you find the librarians that would be attending a marketing workshop to have very mixed background and mixed feelings about marketing, which I'll define uh, coming up in a few more slides. So again, say thanks to the librarians, they are brave. It has come to us with few losses. Librarians truly are brave in Russia. Uh, they're brave because they're underpaid. They're brave because they lack uh, quick access to resources and may not get the resources that they hope for any individual customer uh, because of lack of money and, and lack of uh, access. So the meeting that I went to to get the full picture, uh, I came a day early to do the marketing workshop. Uh, I actually got there and uh, the morning uh, before the next day, I sat with many of the librarians in the Russian State Library and talked with them and was interviewed uh, by them uh, for their professional publications, which would for them be like their American libraries. Um, theirs was the Russian Library Association. Uh, and again, uh, interview style where they would ask me questions. The whole interview was sent back to me uh, for editing and I returned it. Um, I haven't seen it in publication. It would only be published in Russian, so there was really no need for them to send it to me. What was interesting was that um, after the interviews were over, I was asked to sign a lot of paperwork uh, kind of giving over uh, the interview. Uh, as well as the uh, workshop materials which I developed. Uh, so I did that. That was a decision I made kind of on the spot. I didn't see any point in anything otherwise. So be it, as they say. 
So again, uh, there was a lot of uh, photo taking, a lot of documenting, a lot of excitement, uh, if you will, about an international group coming into Moscow, into the Russian State Library, and uh, uh, specifically about someone from the United States coming to, quote, teach class. Uh, the afternoon of the workshop was a roundtable discussion, which would include the members of the committee, again, which were from all the countries that I listed, as well as um, directors of the Russian State Library, uh, who some attended the workshop and some who just came for the roundtable. <clears throat> Then we had a meeting of the International Marketing Award Jury, uh, which is an award we developed 10 years ago, uh, which was really to help further marketing education and uh, award libraries, any library, any part of the world who was conducting uh, valuable uh, marketing uh, services or programming. And then we had the regular meeting of our committee and, of course, a tour of the beautiful uh, cultural sites in Moscow. <clears throat> so again, uh, librarians in Moscow are very much like us. They do more with less and they care about their customers. Uh, the main difference, as I've said earlier, is that when I say less, I mean L-E-S-S, -S, capital Y's, and uh, care about their customers, uh, the ones they can identify and find out about. Again, there's not the vast amount of data that we enjoy in the United States by which to explore uh, potential customer markets or even better understand actual customer uh, markets. Some of the libraries are magnificent and splendid and monumental as they are in our country, and some are very small and uh, almost like storefronts. So again, uh, this was uh, kind of the original uh, webcast. Uh, it was a two-hour. There was a translator, which was very, very helpful, and it was sponsored by RLA. Now, for those of you who may or may not know, the American Library Association was founded in 1876 and has certainly been formidable in our country um, for many, many reasons, issues, and also the the uh, probably most important to those of us who work on the academic side, the American Library Association uh, provides accreditation for library and information study schools in the United States. Uh, for example, at Florida State, our school has been accredited since 1951. It was um, born <laughs> in 1947. And these accreditation processes go on every seven years. I know San Jose is going through their accreditation right now. So again, considering uh, the two countries uh, side by side, RLA has only existed since 1994. While ALA has many individuals who belong, such as me, I've always had an individual membership which I've paid for, uh, RLA is comprised only of member groups. So again, uh, currently they have 36 chapters of various interest groups, uh, and they hope to continue developing and maturing, and uh, they do sponsor conferences uh, such as this. And so um, because I was already going to be in Moscow, uh, then I was able to conduct the workshop, and it wasn't uh, an additional expense for them. <clears throat> So again, uh, these, these photos are of some of the young people who attended the workshop, and specifically I focus on them because they came and really grabbed my elbow and asked me to come visit their libraries. Uh, this was the most rewarding part of the trip to Moscow for me. Uh, as I've already told you, I, I'm from Florida. I get cold very easily. It was extraordinarily cold. Uh, and uh, there were limitations of time and distance on the trip. And so to really be able to see uh, through the eyes of new professionals in Russia, their libraries was definitely exciting. Uh, the libraries were not large. Uh, they were limited. The staff uh, had very limited spacing, for example, uh, cubicles. Uh, that would be maybe the size of, of one of our offices. Um, 
very, very tight quarters. Uh, again, librarians are, are not well paid in Russia. And so the fact that it's attracting this, this uh, real uh, highly enthusiastic uh, group of young people in Russia, I think, has, has a great um, forebearing on the future uh, for information professionals. Uh, in Russia and, and as it develops and comes out of some of the controlled uh, eras of the past. So again, uh, picture this now if you uh, had had my marketing class, which I see a familiar name or two. Um, again, this is the basis of how I teach marketing, looking at uh, the beginning of the review of the external environment, proactively scanning. Uh, all these uh, factors that affect your organization, and then reviewing and knowing the internal uh, organization, and then you know developing uh, your products and services to suit uh, customers for what they want and need as you scan and get to know <clears throat> your community. Well, this was the first um, kind of um, collision in the marketing workshop. Uh, data is not freely or readily available in Russia. Uh, and I, I'm not going to speak to why or, or appear to be knowledgeable. Uh, I don't know. I can only make assumptions. But I do know that uh, there is not, of course, and there are many, many countries in the world that this is true that are, uh, you know, of all different flavors. Uh, that there's not a lot of census data available. For example, in Canada, census data is expensive. In our country, it's not. <clears throat> We're very fortunate. Always encourage uh, students and librarians to use U.S. Census data, uh, which is freely available, usually through local city or county planning departments, uh, to get to know their community or potential community. This type of data isn't available uh, in many countries, and it's not available in Russia. So again, I felt I needed to start off and introduce what is marketing, make sure we're all speaking the same language. Uh, there was a translator. She was terrific. She was uh, very uh, well spoken in English and in Russian, and she was uh, had traveled. She was uh, had been exposed to Western views and understood uh, marketing. And um, perhaps she was chosen for this reason, but she was a real boon and bonus for me in the setting that I was in. So again, to come to terms with uh, the subject matter and what I was going to be presenting, what is marketing, it was important that I distinguish it from sheerly promotion, uh, that marketing is a systematic planning tool that's based on marketing research, segmentation, then you develop your products and services, the mix strategy, and evaluate. There's confusion all over the world about marketing is it promotion. Uh, years ago when I first started teaching marketing, I'd have students uh, leave the classroom, go into the library, and look up marketing in library literature. And lo and behold, it would be housed under promotion. Uh, again, this is the august, uh, you know, tome of the library profession. At that time, it was a tome. It wasn't digitized, and uh, promotion was uh, the head, head heading, and marketing was the subhead. So again, that would be like putting a little pinky finger as the heading and uh, body as the subunit. <clears throat> so no one has a corner on the confusion. What I left with them was a series of exercises uh, that they could do with their staff or as individuals. Uh, there certainly wasn't time in the morning workshop to go through exercises, but I did uh, leave these with them. Everything you're seeing right now, which is formalized, was translated into Russian. It was dispersed in print and uh, digital. It was very funny to see all my work uh, that I'm so familiar with in, in really another language with dif different alphabetic uh, characters. So again, uh, this was also of interest and kind of a, a light bulb for all of us that 
what we take as ordinary as mission statements isn't quite the norm uh, necessarily in other uh, settings. So while mission statements have been around in the United States since the 80s, this may not be true in every other part of the world. And this is extremely important for successful marketing to occur because you need uh, a mission statement which really does express uh, what business you're in, who you serve, uh, that your staff and stakeholders have agreed upon, and that uh, educates uh, stakeholders and new customers on, on what, what the purpose of your organization is. So I decided to go ahead with the four-step marketing model and present the workshop with certain variations uh, to the Moscow librarians. I think, again, um, of greatest interest was, and uh, somewhat puzzlement, was how would they get the data to really examine who potential customer groups are. The concept of segmentation was very interesting, and then the ready and fluid and more dynamic development of products and services to respond to new market information was of interest as well. The evaluation component uh, is always obscure, uh, but definitely uh, is necessary in order to have the resources you need to uh, fight budget cuts or to uh, get new resources. So again, some of these were not necessarily new concepts, but they were concepts that aren't discussed frequently. So marketing research, uh, again, just the whole concept of having data readily available uh, was uh, not a fresh uh, feeling to those attending. In looking at this, uh, there was interest and, and some buzz around the room about the external environments and the concept of a librarian or staff proactively gathering information uh, proactively and then having access to customer data such as demographics, uh, where they live, um, basically uh, how much they might use the library, uh, how, how they use it, and uh, any type of benefit that they might gain uh, from their relationship with the library. So I encouraged in light of uh, the short time that I, ha I had with them and that I've been with them and saw that the lack of data was a problem, to use any data that they did have that's on hand, that you always have more data than you think, uh, even if it may come from number of visits, uh, some rudimentary uh, secondhand or secondary uh, data or information that you can get from local government uh, about sheer population numbers, perhaps <clears throat> language spoken, age, uh, education related information that might come from local schools. Uh, I was kind of ransacking my brain for information that might be available. Uh, this particular uh, list was helpful to further examine what some of these concepts mean. Uh, to consider the economy, this was certainly something well understood by all. Uh, and again, uh, that many of the people that they serve, uh, at least elicited by those who chose to speak, uh, in fact, some were immigrants who lived temporarily in the city uh, for work and sometimes might come to some libraries. The concept of competition was really um, not as strong uh, in the regard that we look at it in the United States. In the United States, when we think of public libraries and competition, uh, we're thinking about public funding, which is definitely each of us are knocking at the same door. Police and fire, schools and libraries are all, uh, you know, kind of feeding from the same public trough. Uh, competition, I believe, is, is a lesser known concept at this time uh, for the library field in Russia uh, because you don't have uh, widespread uh, access to the internet, 
uh, at home like you do even in the United States. So the concept of, of being able to access sundry and any internal records was also a little bit um, difficult. Uh, when you think about, you know, the access most of us have, we can go to an intranet, our strategic plan is on the website, uh, certainly if you requested uh, any of the customer feedback, uh, you might get them if you actually conducted customer feedback. Uh, and then planning documents or if you had the opportunity to apply for grants, uh, what those proposals would look like. So again, what you're going through here is you're realizing uh, that you're dealing with a whole uh, profession and population of people who don't have easy access to some of the data that uh, we do. So customer research and the environmental scanning were of the most interest to the young librarians. And I'm sorry to use an, uh, what may look like ageism here. Uh, it's certainly not meant that, but I can only tell you that the ones who appeared to be young were the ones who could speak English. Uh, probably because they had the opportunity to take English in school, and they felt they understood the, some of the concepts I was uh, communicating and wanted to uh, come up to me and communicate with me, and felt uh, confident enough to invite me to come and visit their libraries. So again, uh, that's the only distinction here by age. I would be more than happy to go with anyone of any age to any library, but that is not the way it uh, shaped out. So again, uh, this shows you on the right, this is a library. There was a room uh, to the right of the photo. It was mostly like closed-in stacks, uh, very limited. Uh, these are the artworks of a local artist who is apparently quite well known. But again, uh, there. It didn't appear to be, at least on the days that I visited, um, a general hum and entry and exit of the general public, even though these were public libraries. So the concept of customer groups, uh, they did have some recognition. They have a children's library, which is quite uh, heralded and well known in Moscow. I didn't visit that. Uh, and they. Uh, they communicated that they did outreach from the library to children's uh, groups in the Moscow area. Now, I don't know how those children were grouped beyond schools, but there was discussion of some outreach. So often I'll tell this story, especially when I'm in an international setting. Uh, my friend Daniel Reunye, a Kenyan library professor, uh, he and a fellow professor conducted all the steps of marketing. Uh, they did marketing research, they identified a segment, and they developed products and services to meet the needs of that segment and then evaluated. And the current project, the Camelmobile, is uh, currently still in effect upon my last reading. Uh, I always tell this story because it's a fun, colorful way to emphasize uh, how systematic marketing can work and be beneficial. Uh, simply the professors knew there were school-aged children in Kenya that weren't uh, being exposed to any type of school or reading material. So they estimated the numbers of those children and then targeted six villages and asked each village that ended up participating uh, to donate a camel. Uh, each camel had books in a tent from an international uh, group and the camels went into these rural areas and set, the tents were set up with the books and then percentages were taken of the number of children who were reached through, through this uh, method. <clears throat> and this was extremely successful, the camel mobile, and uh, really indicate how valuable uh, the fourth step of marketing can be where you really get measures of success or it could be lack of success. In this case, they were successful. Lack of success simply helps you stop a program. Uh, this helped uh, continue uh, the funding for it. So again, um, 
I think any of you who've traveled or have been in very different cultures, you'll realize that some stories uh, go over well, some don't. Uh, for example, uh, when I was being interviewed prior to the workshop, uh, I was being asked a series of questions, some I felt very suited and for and qualified to answer, some I didn't. One I didn't feel qualified for was Dr. Kuntz, what is the future of the book? I said, well, let's see, I'm not really someone who uh, studies that aspect within our profession. Uh, there are many who do. Uh, I can certainly uh, get citations for you when I get back home if, if this is something of, of interest, but for this article I don't feel like I have the spontaneity of information to really provide. And then I made a quick joke. I said, well, of course, they'll always be an Amazon.com. Now, you know, that may not even be that funny to any of you attending. Maybe it wasn't that funny to me, but it was kind of funny. Uh, in a sense. Well, these kind of jokes aren't, it's not that they're not funny, they're just not quickly understood or processed uh, because of the cultural differences. So again, that was fortunate for me to kind of bomb out before the workshop because I realized I shouldn't intercede with uh, some of the jokes that I might often um, desire to or warm comments or quick comments might not be appropriate even for a group of people who, um, you know, we look very much alike and share Western behavior but probably had very different concepts of humor. So again, uh, talking about the fact that most libraries do have a litany of products uh, which are sold at a sum of customer cost, uh, those costs being time, uh, gas, parking, all these things uh, to our litany of products and services ranging from not only books and computer access and story times, but also the librarian in our country is a product. Um, we have a channel of delivery, the library, we have websites, we have branches, we have bookmobiles, we have outreach. We have a, a wide assortment of places or channels of delivery. And then we have our promotion. Uh, again, which I reiterated is very far down the marketing food chain. Uh, marketing promotion are not the same. Of course, promotion is a tool of marketing and it comes uh, to true value within the marketing mix strategy. So this was of some interest to this discernment. Uh, and I was, I was glad about that because this is important because it's often um, confused with promotion in many countries and by many people in many professions. So again, um, on that note, uh, our jury, as I mentioned earlier, did meet, this was after the workshop, uh, where we review applications for the marketing award. And again, uh, in continuity, uh, this is one of the major uh, efforts and successful ventures of our committee, all volunteer work by the way, uh, to develop this award to uh, create an understanding of what true marketing is and uh, not just give the award out freely for fun promotional campaigns. <clears throat> by the way, in this room, if you see the bookcase uh, there on the right, <clears throat> this was another one of the subtle ways I think Americans were much more brash and, uh, you know, flamboyant, certainly amongst us, that's not true, but as, as a culture and population. And I kept being guided over towards the uh, bookcase. And so, you know, uh, obviously at some point I realized that, you know, they really wanted me to look at the bookcase in the library, in the Russian State Library where our meetings were held. And when I looked in the bookcase, it was truly every single thing I have ever written. I, I literally fell backwards. Uh, I've never uh, been so complimented in any setting I've been in. Uh, even my own office, there were a couple of things I didn't have, which they gave me copies of. So uh, it was uh, a great honor uh, to, to be treated in such a manner. <laughs> And if you'd like to know more about the award, please go to isla.org uh, and look up International Marketing Award. So last year, uh, the winner uh, who was awarded in Singapore was from uh, Estonia, 
uh, Tartu University. And this was very exemplary uh, because she had used uh, the tenets of marketing and they had targeted a segment of visually disabled students with talking books. Um, again, in countries which even appear to be as modern as the United States, uh, there isn't the attention or legislation for the disabled uh, physically, visually, mentally that there currently is in our country. And so these types of international efforts that our profession can be a part of uh, is really broadening and widening to share our values uh, in such an extensive way. Uh, and it's exciting uh, to see the effect that our profession uh, can have by quickly learning from each other and especially in an international setting where there isn't the control of your country. <clears throat> so again, um, to go through this, I think this was a good choice on my part. I'm not bragging. Uh, but to kind of uh, give this example of a goal, increased services to older residents who cannot come to the library. This is certainly true in Moscow and in the aging population there. Uh, in consideration of outreach and home visit programs, uh, trying to identify how many people that would be, and then developing your strategy of what you would uh, offer, and possibly even partnering. Uh, with other organizations. Some of these concepts and strategies may seem ho-hum to us or been there, done that, but that's not true in other uh, cultures and uh, stages of development in other countries in the world. So again, in the marketing evaluation I presented, uh, this was again back to the uh, stressing of the importance of data for the library in order to really uh, sell uh, the impact that it's having on the population and fight for the funds uh, that may be competed for. I think this was kind of a new concept as well, the consideration of using data that uh, is gathered uh, to compete for funding uh, from government or from the funding agency. Uh, this was uh, kind of a new concept. So again, um, at the end of the uh, marketing workshop, of course, there was time for questions. Uh, a lot, and if you'd like to read more of my memories, uh, you know, written in greater extent, you can go to the ifla.org and certainly look at the newsletter, uh, which I wrote a piece for. Uh, the touring of the country, they do have a rich culture. Uh, again, it was, it's bright and beautiful in pockets, gorgeous, uh, monumental, of course, uh, architecture and buildings and, and famous, uh, you know, uh, the dolls, uh, the trinkets, the outfits, the costumes. Uh, again, this is difficult to access quickly, not the gift shops, but uh, certainly some of the um, architecture and tours. There had to be a great deal of permission and grouping and uh, exchange of documents to visit different places. All right, well, I'd like to leave time uh, for questions or anything I might have omitted uh, that I can think of that I meant to say. What um, Dr. Koontz didn't mention um, was that at the IFLA meeting in Singapore uh, this past August, uh, the uh, librarians from Russia did in fact give her uh, a, a plaque, I believe it was, an award recognizing her uh, efforts and thanking her uh, in, a, in a sort of a public fashion for the workshop, which um, I happen to be at, uh, I've had the opportunity to attend uh, the last uh, couple of IFLA uh, meetings, uh, which uh, annual meetings, which are always held in August, and um, that's how I knew she had done this and, and uh, got her to do this presentation for us. So it was good that they were uh, thinking of her and recognizing her in, in this particular manner. Uh, and they did, and I thought that was a very um, 
impressive and also strategic in that there was a lot of tension, as you recall, and remains tension over the uh, policies uh, for uh, you know, uh, gay citizens in Russia. So I think when you're in a profession, uh, and especially like the library field, we have a lot of opportunity to transcend country policies with our own intellectual freedom and policies of our profession, which are more prevalent in the international groups. And I appreciated their presence in giving me such a lovely place. Absolutely. Uh, Amy, uh, go ahead and grab a mic and um, make your comment or ask your question, please. Hi. Thanks so much for this uh, presentation. It's really wonderful. I was wondering, Dr. Kuntz, will you have an opportunity to hear from anybody in Russia in the next year or two or three to see, you know, what, if, if anything, they've been able to do with the material you gave them? I will see um, Neela, the colleague that invited me next week uh, for the first time the ISLA group will come to the United States to Washington. Uh, it may seem odd that I didn't gather feedback. Uh, there were some questions at the end. I, you know, I hesitate from sounding critical. I'm not. Um, the questions seem to be somewhat formal um, because of the setting. I don't think there was, is, I don't think it was the tradition or the norm uh, for a lot of questioning to go on unless it was uh, seemingly formal or uh, acceptable. I just don't think the, the culture of, of question asking <laughs> is as prevalent there. Um, for example, the discussion roundtable, which was held after the workshop, uh, we had six committee members from Germany, the Netherlands, Canada, Norway, Finland, uh, the United States, and none of these people were asked or allowed to speak. The only people that discussed anything were representatives of the Russian State Library. So eliciting feedback is, is, is difficult and somewhat saddening. Uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I could only see any glimmer of positivity in the faces of the uh, librarians who communicated with me and asked me to visit their libraries and the hope that I saw, they understood it. They got it. They just knew they simply didn't have the data to do the full gamut. But I, I don't think that the uh, imprint will fade. Hopefully, as Russia continues, or may, I'm not a Russian authority, don't know, uh, hopefully, uh, you know, as let's face it, I mean, young people all over the world are grabbing so much information when they can from the internet uh, that it's just an unstoppable force. And I'm so glad that libraries are part of internet access. So um, I, I was curious, you weren't able, or no individual offered to strike up a kind of a personal, you know, um, ongoing communication, professional communication with you, for, you know, from the time you left, um, you know, to yes, ask there, any pr other there, questions or anything like that? No, and I definitely uh, left that door open. There were several that I became friends with on Facebook and, um, you know, for some reason that has disappeared. Uh, there was a feedback form that was filled out. Everybody painstakingly filled it out. Uh, one young woman who worked at a science library um, stood up and said that she didn't think the classical marketing approach I presented uh, would work for Russia. And so uh, I did notice uh, she was highlighted on their website. It was in Russian, so I really couldn't tell the full text of it. But um, I thought that was interesting that um, her comment, her one comment, uh, was seemed to be so uh, celebrated. I, I did have one more question. Sorry. Um, are there any Russian students at San Jose in the library program or down in Florida? 
Um, we don't have any in Florida. We do have one staff member who's from Georgia. And um, I think uh, in ISLA, you know, there are great contingencies of Russians who attend. Uh, Russia has been uh, generous in their support of ISLA. Uh, I don't think the ISLA conference has taken place there since the late 90s. Um, but again, um, I thought it was exciting that this workshop, even though there wasn't a lot of monetary uh, expense, there was a tremendous expense of staff time uh, and the marketing of the marketing workshop and the translator, um, I thought showed an investment in reaching out and looking outward and opening up opportunities. I would like to know, uh, very much like you do, uh, what traces have you know left? Were there any sparks uh, that that really uh, may have ha have happened? I can certainly ask uh, Mila when I see her next week. We've got a lot of e e email that goes on out of um, some of these countries, like it does for us. Uh, I'm not sure if we have any current students at SLIS right now from uh, Russia or even any of the former republics. I think we had uh, one or two at one time, but I honestly don't keep up with the demographics uh, enough to to let you know. And I uh, I don't know that if we're going to get back to Russia anytime soon because the last time they were there, there was uh, tanks in front of the hotel where a lot of the members were staying. That happened to be when the um, uh, latest iteration of the revolution happened and uh, uh, I, I you know, don't remember all the names of the political figures, but um, it, yeah, there were uh, some of the people uh, I knew there were trying to get out. Uh, if they could get out, some people couldn't get out and, and ended up staying there a longer period of time. So um, until things calm down a little bit more in uh, Russia, I don't know that IFLA is going to get back there anytime soon. Uh, but Russia does send a fair contingent of people. I have not seen the young people that were in these photos, which um, was very reassuring. They have a tendency to be mostly uh, directors and, and um, more senior people um, than some of the younger people that were in some of the slides here that uh, Dr. Kuhn showed us. I have another question. I don't want to, um, you know, push in front of um, Bev or anybody, but um, I was wondering, as far as IFLA, um, Dr. Kuhn, have you? had occasion to um, meet any students working, you know, on any of the committees, your committee or somebody else's, and um, if you have or haven't, would you have any advice or suggestions for a student who's interested in the IFLA? Absolutely. Um, in fact, there was um, a program I sponsored and paid for the memberships of two students um, a few years back. The program fell apart because what was discovered, of course, which is reasonable, is that it's just too expensive to go to IFLA for most students. And uh, while IFLA does provide some scholarships for travel to professional librarians from developing countries, um, the students who you know might participate uh, just simply didn't have the extension of funds, you know, to go to some of these countries. But there is more and more interest. I, I think there is a student paper competition now that one of the committees is, is sponsoring, um, and which is excellent. Uh, my advice is really, if you really want to participate internationally, you really need to be generous of, of your time and spirit, uh, as well as, uh, you know, access the funds. That's almost the third thing. The first two things are more important to really want to contribute and do so um, 
you know, lacking um, recognition, although I appreciate recognition I've gotten while within IFLA. Uh, there were many, many years where that simply wasn't so, and I just scurried around and worked really hard and did projects and did things because I wanted to, and I wanted to be a part of helping people in other countries specifically understand marketing. Uh, the first year I was involved, I got permission from the American Marketing Association to use their dictionary to write a marketing glossary um, that trans transferred and transposed the concepts and settings of business into the library. And uh, that glossary has been, you know, translated into every language as far as I know, even Egyptian. So. Uh, you know, I I wasn't sure I'd ever get to go to IFLA again, but I decided to to uh, throw my hat in with IFLA and continue, of course, to work with my state association in ALA. But I think as a student, it's difficult to go to any level of conferences, you know, local, state, national, international, because you're not working full time and you don't have a lot of discretionary funding. But um, there's certainly ways to uh, you know, work with professors who are working on projects uh, if and when you can. Thank you. Well, that's very kind of you, Bev. I hope so. I felt it was so with the, especially the the way they, the light bulbs were just on in their faces and um, they just huddled around me at the break and said they really, uh, understood environmental scanning and they thought it was essential. Uh, they were just very excited about the information. It was, you know, marketing is largely common sense, so uh, to have it presented in a systematic, learnable fashion. So, you know, as far as signing over my materials to the Russian State Library, I went, come see, come sign, you know, whatever, um, go for it. Let, let me, um, I, I, I want to go ahead and, and uh, verbalize my name on every piece of paper that was of me. <laughs> Say, well, my gift to you. Uh, that's because you're a rock star over there. Uh, let me verbalize uh, Bev's comments because we will have a YouTube version of this in the chat box won't be available. Uh, so Dr. Koontz was just responding to a comment made that um, said that uh, they were certain that the learning um, from her workshop in, over there will be used quietly and creatively by Russian librarians working at making changes uh, in small steps. So that was the comment that uh, uh, Dr. Koontz was just responding to. Any other uh, questions or comments? If not, let me uh, thank you for participating. Let me thank Dr. Kuntz again for her presentation. Our uh, second uh, spring colloquium will take place in about five weeks on Wednesday, the 19th of March, again at 12 o'clock uh, Pacific time, and will be on uh, daylight savings time, I believe, by then. And um, it'll be on a somewhat related topic, more um, marketing or, uh, or not marketing, but um, promotion or, or what's uh, I think now considered or called advocacy. Uh, we'll have representatives from an organization called everylibrary.org and this, uh, this group tries to help uh, predominantly public libraries that are uh, dealing with a local election or referendum or something like that, and they provide, in effect, consulting type uh, assistance to these libraries to make them um, more successful with some of these local elections. And we've got the uh, two co-founders of that organization, one of whom is a, a SLIS graduate, and they will be talking to us about what uh, that organization does and some of the uh, libraries and everything that they've been a part of. So uh, that will take place on the 19th of March. And again, thank you for uh, participating.